Okay, let's do this thing. Hello, everybody, and welcome to my AEW Dynamite review, the fallout show from AEW Revolution from last Sunday. A um, lot of things going on in the show tonight. Honestly, I didn't really know the card going into this until probably maybe 30 minutes or maybe an hour before the show. And looking at it, I wasn't really impressed with this card out of like one match or two. But if you do want to hear uh, my thoughts on Revolution, go check out my AEW Revolution review that is up online right now from last Sunday. Uh, definitely go check that out. But let's kick it off because they did have a video package of everything that went down at Revolution. And the first match that starts off is Orange Cassidy versus Jay Lethal for the All Atlantic title. Which honestly, this match literally, I swear to you, it happened like a few months ago. Why am I seeing this? Not even a month, maybe a well, maybe like two, three months ago. But I feel like I've seen this before already, and I have seen this match already. Um, kind of funny for Jay Lethal to begin another title shot after he was just in a title match on Sunday for the tag team titles, but now they got him going against Cassidy and. You know, they sent all their goons to the back and stuff, and the refs holding, um, you know, Jeff Jarrett and them back. Listen, I didn't want to see this match because, one, I didn't like that Jay Lethal lost to um, Orange Cassidy the last time, and I knew I wasn't going to like it again. And, you know, I know they had, like, oh, Lethal, he couldn't do the Lethal injection because his arm was injured. But, dude, did Jay Lethal need to lose to Cassidy? Listen, I don't really care much about this All-Atlantic belt and... Um, I just gonna be more to say about it later on because we'll get to the special announcement because that's their way to boost ratings to get Tony Khan on TV so the snowman can talk. But um, I didn't want to see this match, and even I'm like, Jay Lethal's got to win this time, right? He's got to win this time, but no, um, he loses clean to Orange Cassidy, and I just roll my eyes and I'm like, what the hell is this? And Lethal goes to get the Golden Globe and was going to hit him with it, but the ref stopped him. Jeff Jarrett comes in the ring, hits him with the stroke, and then hits the guitar over the bad knee. The best friends come out, which we'll get in a little bit of that later on to see where that's going to go on. But still, I didn't need to see this match. Or then again, it's like we've been doing these All-Atlantic belt matches for the past few weeks now. And like the Morrissey one was bad enough. Jay Lethal twice, that's just insane now at this point. Um, but right after that, uh, they did go to Ricky Starks, uh, who came out to cut a promo after beating Chris Jericho, which should be a big thing, to be honest. Uh, it really should, uh, especially after a pay-per-view. But since he says he beat Chris Jericho and what is next for him, he wasn't sure. Next thing you know, Bullet Club's music, uh, playing in, and Juice Robinson comes out and attacks him. Some probably thought he forgot he was even in Bullet Club, which even commentary forgot because ever since he got to this company, he's been wearing the Bullet Club colors ever since. Um, I think it was he just on like that New Japan show like a few weeks ago. So he's still in Bullet Club. And, you know, he hits like the Pulp Friction with well, the left hand of God and what the, I think the Pulp Friction there, but they start playing the Bullet Club music. Honestly, I actually thought, well, I know it wasn't going to happen now, given what I know at this point, but I would have thought Jay Lethal may have came out. Not Jay, less Jay Lethal. Jay White would have came out, but then again, it looks like New Japan has a new leader of the Bullet Club, and that's David Finley, since they got Gato with him over there in the New Japan Cup. But that's another story for a different time. But Jay Lethal, I would have thought that, you know, okay, um, maybe he wasn't kicked out of Bullet Club and attacked by David Finley, but since they now have David Finley and Bullet Club, I would have thought, like, all right, Bullet Club music hit. Jay Lethal comes out, hits a Blade Runner on um, Ricky Starks. That would actually, I would have thought, but I don't think he's signing with AEW now, um, Jay, Jay White. So, um, I don't know. And some probably would have forgot Juice Robinson was in his company or even in Bullet Club itself, which is kind of funny. I look at it now. Um, they have both Finn Juice. Like, let's remember, Juice Robinson, you know, ended up joining Bullet Club and basically turning on his former tag partner. And they had a kind of a whole feud through the G1. But now both of them are in Bullet Club now. So what does that really explain? Really think about that. Like, weren't these two out of Bullet Club, battling Bullet Club, then one joins Bullet Club, but the other one doesn't? Now they both join. They're both in Bullet Club. And now one is supposedly maybe the new leader now. I, I don't even know what's going on Bullet Club. And listen, I gave Jay, Jay White a chance, and that took time and whatnot as the leader, but, you know, even David Finley, I'm like, this is who we got as the leader now, like, this is what we're going with, we don't have anybody else that could have been the leader of the Bullet Club, like, really, just really think about that for a second here, folks, so, um, 
I, I, I don't I don't know. I'm not really sure how to feel about the whole thing in general or where that's going. But yeah, Juice Robinson, I thought maybe another Bullet Club member would have showed up. But hey, Juice Robinson, folks. Wardlow was being interviewed. Now, some people are saying this is a work, but apparently Wardlow was robbed um, out of his rental car. And, you know, basically he didn't have any of his gear. The TNT title was stolen. And now it's going to be a false count anywhere match. Why is it a false count anywhere match? Because he doesn't have his gear. So there you go. Uh, Renee Young was interviewed by Ruby Soho, which I thought this was a very good promo by Ruby. Now, some would say it's the whole, you know, you turn your back on me thing. But um, this is a step in the right direction because she talked about how, you know, oh, everybody was excited when I got here and everything. Just like Tony Storm, you guys called her the interim champion, which is something I'm saying for too. Like, instead of acknowledges the real champion. Paige comes back out of retirement. No one doesn't care and turn on her. Ruby Soho talked about how she had lost to Britt Baker. Uh, when getting the title shot, and then Chris Statlander, who, uh, you know, in the Owen Hart tournament, but, um, you know, I got booed out the building and everything, so, you know, everybody wants to talk to homegrown talent and that we're not, and uh, this company's going to treat us with respect, and basically just going on saying, you know, you can't build on a broken foundation, you have to start, uh, you know, you can only start new, and, um, you know, we're bringing it back now, and we deserve a win and stuff. Or we're taking our entitled women who think they deserve to win. And then, you know, let's come on, bring the next homegrown talent out, which was sky, blue, green, yellow, red, orange. I don't know how many colors I can name right here, but I do agree with some people that say on the internet, uh, sky blue, there is some cake there. So I have to agree with that statement. Um, but yeah, this match, Ruby ended up beating her, um, most like basically one sided and whatnot. Um, getting the win, uh, right after Saray and Tony Storm come in, didn't start, you know, spraying spray paint on her because they want to be NWO for some reason. Willow tries to come stop, um, you know, Ruby, but she ended up getting attacked and then she gets spray paint on her. So yeah, they're still trying to be like discount NWO here for some reason. Um, but a good promo by Ruby regardless. Um, Hangman Page, I guess talked about that this battle is over with Moxley and apologized to Renee after what she had to see on Sunday and whatnot. Uh, you know, if you want to blame someone, don't look at me, okay? Um, but he said he's done with Mox after this whole Texas depth thing, even though they mix up the rules with that a lot. Uh, next, I know that a MJF promo talked about that his birthday is next week and it's going to be in Winnipeg. And it's going to be a big birthday bash or a rebar mitzvah. So, the terror has just begun. Um, FTR came out. Big pop, big FTR chant. Basically, they talked about, um, you know, what's going on, losing the titles uh, to the acclaim. And then the guns, they lost three sets of tag teams in a month. They had some hard times. They're one of their best friends in wrestling. Uh, but basically, they're not going to let the guns claim to be the best in the world and stuff. They're going to come back and do something. You know, Cash talked about, you know, uh, you know, you got less to talk to you about your father. You went to private school. I never had that. I just had to learn from respect and fight from his dad, as he said. But Dak says, you know me, you know my family and all that stuff. But um, I'm not here to give you the same rah-rah speech. But, uh, you know, we had one of the greatest trilogies in pro wrestling. It was taken away moments later by the gun club. And, you know, we finally got some retribution. And we want those tag team titles because they said they can do it for themselves, doing it for the Briscoes, and doing it for the fans. So a good FTR promo out there with Tony Schiavone. Um, Jay Cargill, basically, I guess, open challenge next week for the, you know, TBS title. I don't know why she went on that pay-per-view. The Jericho Appreciation Society, Jericho, Garcia, and Sammy went against the... Um, Top Flight and um, AR Fox. Basically, uh, not much I can say from this, but whatever, I don't even want to say spot fits, but, uh, you know, it ended up with Hager using the baseball bat and on um, AR Fox and Jericho with the Judas effect. Next thing you know, um, the Ever Rise cast talk about, you know, Jericho Appreciation Society has been around for one year. I'm honestly surprised it's been a whole year since these guys have been a group, okay? I didn't even know it's been that long. I felt it's only been like maybe six months, but. I guess I'm wrong then uh, if this thing is going on that long. Uh, but, you know, they said they want those six-man tag titles now. It's kind of funny. Jericho just lost, but he gets a title shot now, just like Jay Lethal. But, um, you know, 
they talk about House of Black and you got one of the greatest entrances um, and whatnot and tell them to get to the ring. The elite came out then uh, as they thought about, listen, man, uh, you know, we, we've been apart from each other for a minute now. We stayed uh, in, out of each other's businesses, but we want those six man belts back. Don Callison took, came out and took the mic from Omega, interesting, and talked about, you know, the elite want those titles back. And what happened in Revolution, we're next in line. Jericho, we've been friends for a long time, but you're the second greatest uh, wrestler from Winnipeg. Um, I wasn't that. But Cal said, um, you know, we have a couple months to train. Jericho, he may be third on that list, but House of Black was on the screen saying, say, if you want those belts, come take them. So I guess next week is going to be some triple threat six, well, triple threat six man title belt i don't know that sounds very convoluted and it's going to be just an insanity spot fest i'm sure next week which i really don't care much for these titles but maybe house of black will change something i don't know but it's gonna be a spot fest tony khan and another one of his announcement most likely to boost ratings um i guess now it's gonna be called the international title instead of the all-atlantic belt which next week will be Jeff Jarrett versus Orange Cassidy. At this point, at this point, I'd rather just have Jeff Jarrett win the belt just because I just don't care about this belt, whatever, whatever name. All they did was this. This is Tony Khan's big announcement. You promoted the Shazam movie and you changed the belt to the international title. That was his big announcement, okay? Shazam, international belt, Jeff Jarrett, Orange Cassidy. I don't care. I'd rather just give Jeff Jarrett the win just because cause I'm just sick of this whole thing in general, okay? Slap nuts. I don't care if Jeff Jarrett's getting a title shot in this late in the game. I'll take this over Cassidy. I don't care. Um, Danielson had cut a promo, basically talking about he's going home and what happened with MJF and how he couldn't feel his, like, legs and arms and whatnot after, you know, he only tapped out because of his family, and now he said it's time for him to go home. So we may not be seeing Danielson for a minute. John Moxley and Claudio, Claudio went against um, Dark Order. Why? I don't know. I don't care. Mox and them won. Blackpool. Next thing you know, Mox wouldn't let go of it then. Um, basically, they start beating the hell out of the Dark Order. Uh, the Pizza Uno guy comes out, which I have zero clue why they even sent him out there. But they start beating the hell out of them. Hangman comes out then to check on the Dark Order. But, um, you know, he ends up punching Claudio. And then they all start jumping him then. And then fans said, let them, like, where is this going? Why does this feud need to continue? We've seen enough of Mox versus Hangman. They've had, like, four matches. Unless I get to even number, are we doing another rubber match again? Do we need to continue this feud? Do we need to see the Blackpool Club versus the Dork Order? No, we don't. Move on to something else. I've seen enough of Hangman and Moxley. We, what more can they do? They, dan they did the damn Texas death match thing, whatever the rules. They like to change around all the time. We've seen enough. Okay, we have seen enough of this. And going into the Dork Order ain't really much to talk about either. Okay, um, especially when they see sending the Uno guy out there. So, I don't know. Um, in the main event, we did get Warlord versus Powerhouse Hive in a false count anywhere match where they were already fighting in the back, um, you know, on top of a car and stuff, um, going to the ring. Uh, like I said, it's a good brawl and everything. Warlow doing a swan tom off the top rope onto the table outside. Um, you know, trying to pull him towards the um, entrance ramp and stuff. Um, I know he power bombed him on it, which looked brutal. And he was going to power bomb him off of it. But QT Marshall showed up with a QTV shirt. I think I've only seen like one promo package for that. And I don't know what happened to the factory, but Warlow no sold it. He got kicked in the nuts then. As Hobbs, he, him and Hobbs basically power bomb uh, Warlow into a bad looking crash pad, by the way. And um, I guess this is, by the way, this is a false count anywhere match, but apparently you can count to 10 like this is a last man standing. Last time I checked, I don't remember anything being counted to 10 in a false count anywhere match. You win by pinfall or submission, not by count out or, you know, count to 10 like it's a last man standing. Don't understand that right there. Makes no sense. Hobbs, I'm glad, won the title. The way it was done with QT Marshall, I don't know. I don't know if they sell the factory. I don't know where they're going with QT at this point. Then again, I forget QT was even around, but I guess he most likely is on Dark. Now they didn't want a main show with Hobbs. Hobbs, folks. So Hobbs needs QT Marshall all of a sudden or QTV. 
I don't know. The, hot, the TNT belt plays hot potato here, hot potato there, hot potato there. We went from Joe to Warlow for a couple of days. Now back to Powerhouse Hobbs, okay? This title has gone all over the place. Shit, you can go say, like, we've gone from Warlow. Remember when Warlow was the shit and damn near Goldberg White hot? Think about that for a second. But we went from Warlow to Samoa Joe to Darby, back to Samoa Joe, back to Warlow, and now back to Hobbs. How long will Hobbs keep this belt? I don't know, but this belt plays hot potato a lot, folks, and I mean a lot. So what happens next? I got zero clue. All right, the match itself wasn't bad. The Q thing and T thing and stuff really confused me at the end. All right, everything else on the show, depending on what you saw in there, was okay, probably from like promos and stuff, or I don't know. Let's see what else was good. Uh, what, Jericho and them, I know they had a match. Uh, like I said, a false count anywhere. Okay, um, but. Yeah, every, everything else, the Ruby promo was good. Um, yeah, that's all I can really say about this show tonight, to be honest. Um, you know, Mox and Dark Order or whatever, or whatever feud that's going on with that. So, yeah, not much going to the Fallout show. I guess they're trying to set up new things, but still, though, at the same time. So, not really sure. But other than that, that's my review of this show, okay? So, yeah, I'm out here. Comment, subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, Hood Night 90 I'll see y'all then. Peace.